The Oompa Loompas asked, what do you get when you guzzle down sweets? Mmm, probably diabetes, but what do you get when you take a clutch and put it on a long tail mud motor? Well, unfortunately, I have no clue what happens when you put a clutch on a long tail mud motor. Mud Skipper sent me one, and there's only one way to find out what happens. We're gonna bolt it on and send it. Classic YouTube unboxing video and go. Oh my goodness, it's a box and there's so much stuff in there, it makes noise. Just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. So this video is not sponsored by Mud Skipper. They just reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try this thing and I was like, sure, I'll try it and then I'll see if I can set it on fire or break it, which I'm sure one of the things is gonna happen. Now they did send me all of this stuff, this clutch that fits any of the smaller like six and a half horsepower kits, but they didn't send me any instructions, so... I gotta figure this out on my own. So according to Mud Skipper, this will fit any of the small kits for the Mud Motor companies, Mud Skipper, Swamp Runner, or CLP. I know it fits a Mud Skipper because they made this stupid thing. And if it fits a Mud Skipper, then it automatically fits a Swamp Runner because they're basically the same kit as we found out in our Mud Motor review video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link to it right up here and you can go check it out so there was four bolts holding this together i took all four of those bolts out and then this backing plate comes off inside there is the clutch basket there is some type of uh, fancy bearing right there then you've got the clutchinator and the uh, flux capacitor i'm guessing is what that is and those do spinny stuff they also included some nuts bolts and some other stuff that i'm not sure what we're going to need yet but i do know that this fits on right here because i saw it on the internet once and i'm guessing since there's four lock nuts and four washers that's what they want on there so let's screw those on so mud skipper i'm sure on their website somewhere has an appropriate torque spec and it is uh, right there that is the torque spec and make sure we hit that torque spec. There we go. We're good. All right, so it looks like the next thing that's got to go on is this shaft piece. And I'm going to have to, on this beaver dam kit, take this piece off. And to do that, you're going to need two big wrenches. You're going to need one I wasn't playing wrench. And you're going to need one that's like an extra medium size. And once you bust your nut, then you can pull this off. But my hands are so slippery. And then also on the beaver dam, there is a nut right up in here that you're going to have to get off. Just hold that tight and get that nut loose. And there we go. So the spinny part of this clutch looks like it has its own keyway in there or the key for the keyway in there. So we'll go ahead and remove this one because it doesn't look like we're going to need it anymore. I'm guessing... This spacer probably goes on here somewhere, I would assume, unless it fits. No, it doesn't. Well, that fits there. Oh, and that fits there. Oh, and that fits there too. Um, let me consult the interwebs before I go any further because I'm about, I got a feeling I'm about to screw something up. All right, I went searching on the interwebs and didn't see any instruction manuals or anything. So we are going to Jesus take the wheel this bad boy. Slide this. Uh, hold on, I think I got this on backwards. So uh, this on first. Uh, that can't be right because it hits that. So maybe that's where one of these spacers goes. Okay. It's still, it's got some clearance. So I'm hoping that's where that one goes. This one also fits it. Let's see. It gives me barely barely any clearance there's a shim here we can try the shim yeah, that gives some clearance we'll see how that goes i'm guessing this thing just sits on there and then this must go over the top like that and then we'll put these four bolts back in here and tighten them down it is a 14 millimeter go ahead and pull these bolts out of the way so that i can get these right here tightened down that might be a problem this end is not tapped to accept any kind of bolt to hold this on. Hmm, that's not good. Well, we'll try it without it, see what happens. 
All right. Now we should be able to slide this in place and then take the beaver dam coupler and hopefully this is all going to line up like it's supposed to. The bolts that came with the mud skipper kit are a little bit too short for this beaver dam kit so I'm going to just use the ones that came off of the beaver dam kit and looks like with the lock washers it is going to be too short as well. I'll try it with just a, a lock washer by itself. See if that will work. All right, so I got the first two started without any lock washers on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and put the bottom ones on with lock washers. Then I'll take these two out and put those on with lock washers. So I actually decided not to do the lock washers because uh, they didn't have them on there before. So I'd do it now. And these things were such a pain in the butt to get in there. Ain't going through that again. So no lock washers. Now on the beaver dam kit, we've got two side bolts that need to go in that hold this piece onto here, just I guess is extra measure. And of course, neither one of them fits. I'm gonna have to loosen all this back up. And then we'll just give these a good tighten. And if you're wondering what size they are, they are crescent wrench that size. Now we put the shaft in the hole. All right, so now we'll put our beaver dam kit together. That bolt there, this bolt there, and then two of these. And just give all this a good tighten down, and you'll need to make sure that you tighten these down with the correct wrench because these are not made in America, so you're gonna need a metric size crescent wrench. Well, get this all cleaned up. This. Uh, box looks like the last time I put together an Ikea set. There's a lot of stuff left over, but let's just see if it works. Okay, the clutch does work. Uh, it looks like it worked, but as soon as I started revving this thing up, all the bolts fell out. So it looks like it's definitely gonna need a lock washers. All right, so if you decide to do this on a beaver dam kit, I'm sure this works fine on a mud skipper and a swamp runner, but on the beaver dam kit, the ones that come with this are too short. So I use the ones from the beaver dam kit like that, and they're only a little bit longer. Well, what happened is they had just enough thread in there to where I could crank it up and rev it a few times and then they would loosen up and fall right out. So what you're gonna need is one that's even longer like this in order to make it work. Let's measure this and I'll tell you what size you need to get. It is an M8 1.25 and they need to be inch and a half bolts. Now that I've got long enough bolts, I can go back in and I can put the lock washer and the flat washer on each one of these and we should be good to go. Another little handy dandy trick I'll tell you if you decide to do this on a beaver dam kit is leave all four of these bolts just a little bit loose so that you can move the motor around to get this thing all lined up because you're having to line up the coupler hole, the hole in the mount right here, and the hole in the clutch plate all in one and get them to go. So sometimes you do have to kind of rotate the motor a little bit. Leave them all loose, screw them in, get them started, and then you can tighten them all up. Okay, now let's try this again and hopefully nothing will fall off of the motor this time. Don't try this at home. I thought this thing was not supposed to spin, but it, I don't know, maybe it does. Maybe I can adjust the idle down a little bit and see what it does. I 
are important because if not your entire boat will fill up full of water and you'll have to pull it out really really fast so don't forget your boat plug kids <laughs> of the mud skipper clutch on this little long tail kit we're out here today on a 1436 testing this out i think it's because i'm so used to not having a clutch like it's just normal for me to go uh neutral is just push down and pull the prop out of the water i just haven't seen any really major benefits to it for me and my style so one thing i did think was kind of cool was that when i stopped the prop would almost completely stop like you saw when we were in the shop like this prop would still spin slowly and i thought the pressure of the water would be enough to kind of keep it from moving at all but even with no throttle i'm just letting the throttle off completely letting it idle it's still just kind of barely slowly turning which is kind of nice if you're in a lot of scenarios where you need to idle really really slow kind of caveat to that is because the idle is so slow in order to get going a little bit faster you got to kind of goose the throttle and it's hard to find like an appropriate speed because you do have to give this thing some gas in order to get the prop to start spinning again and the clutch to engage. So it's one of those 50-50 things. Some people may like it, some people may not. So I've been out here running it for about an hour now. I've been through some uh, little bit of mud. I know it's not like mud, mud, straight mud, like all oh, you super gator tail boys like. It's only about three, four inches deep where I'm sitting. Literally the, the long tail, I can see the end of the prop right there. Like it's only a couple of inches deep. So I've been running this thing in the mud, trying to see if the clutch will give any and see if it stops the motor from turning or keeps the boat from moving forward. And so far I haven't really seen any issues with it. it did make a couple of really loud screeching noises earlier and that may be because i didn't put it together with any instructions and i have no clue what i was doing but they kind of went away so i guess everything's fine but nothing's smoking on our own fire so we're gonna go play around with it some more and see what we think
noodle survived the lake in the mud and I tried to do everything I could to get it to break or slip or anything. I noticed a little bit of slippage in the, the actual, like when we got into the part where the boat was actually sitting in the mud, I could tell that the prop just wasn't spinning as fast as it normally would as if it was direct drive, but it still got me out of the mud. I, I was able to get the boat unstuck even with two people in it and we were sitting literally on the mud. I'm okay with that, but what we don't know is how is this thing going to survive my style of torture testing. So let's send it so i've always wondered what would happen if you just happen to be riding down the river and your prop just miraculously got stuck in a giant pile of cinder blocks let's see if it'll burn up a clutch Could probably fry bacon on this thing. It's a little warm, um, but it's still working, surprisingly. Just keep torturing it. Finally destroyed the prop. Definitely smells like burnt clutchy poop.
Now if you get real close, you can hear the inside. Something is boiling. Yeah, I, I got nothing. <laughs> So if you ever watched Jerry Springer back in the day, you know it is time for final thoughts. And like my mama always says, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one. So here's my butthole. The Mud Skipper clutch is, it, it works. There's nothing wrong with it. I didn't have any major issues with it. I tried to set it on fire or make it burn itself up and it did not do anything other than smoke a lot. And even when I got done, it was still working. So. I props off to Mudskipper for that. That is pretty cool. Now here's where my opinion comes into play. Do I think you need one on a mud motor and should you go run out and buy one right now? Mm, it depends. If you've been running mud motors for a long time or you've got some experience with them, it's gonna be awkward to you to not have to raise the prop out of the water whenever you wanna stop. Also the really low idle speed is something that took me some getting used to and me personally i don't like having to goose the throttle to get it to go a certain speed i am used to adjusting the idle jet on the carburetor and using that as to set my idle speed now again this is my butthole i'm just being really picky about this if i had a choice to run a clutch or not a clutch i would personally choose not to run a clutch but I'm not gonna take this one off of this motor. I'm gonna leave it on there so we can play around with it some more. It's not anything that I think you absolutely need to run out and buy. If you got the money to spend, go spend it. You might actually like it. Where I do see this as a positive is for people that are just coming into long tail mud motors and you're not used to having to raise the prop up out of the water when you wanna slow down or stop or make a hard turn or you have an issue where you're gonna to have to idle at a really, really low speed, I think this clutch system would come in great and handy for situations like that. Now, one thing I did notice about this clutch kit when I first started using it, it didn't matter how low I idled down the motor and how low I got the idle down to, the prop still spun. As I used the motor for a few hours and used the clutch for a few hours yesterday on the river, I noticed that as time went on, it spun less and less. There were times where it didn't spin at all, and then there were times where it just kind of wanted to barely spin. When we got back to the shop today, I actually took a screwdriver and idled the motor down like really, really low, and I got it to not spin at all. I think the more you break this thing in, the less, I guess, strong the clutch is gonna wanna be at low speed. So if you do get one of these and you wanna get it to where the prop doesn't spin, you're either gonna have to do one of two things, spend a lot of time breaking it in, or you're gonna have to idle it down really, really low. And you're just gonna have to be careful because I don't like idling mud motors down that low. So you're just gonna have to find that happy medium and whatever works best for you. The last thing I want to address is this aluminum prop that I managed to cut in half on a couple of cinder blocks. You saw how long it took me to get this thing to break. But these aluminum props are a little bit tougher than most people give them credit for. I see a lot of garbage being talked on the whole interwebs about, oh, break an aluminum prop every five feet. I personally think that is garbage. I've had really good luck with aluminum props, especially in a mud and vegetation type situation. Uh, if you're gonna be out trying to cut cinder blocks with your motor motor, or you're going somewhere where you got a lot of cypress knees and stuff like that, it may be something that you want to look into as far as getting a stainless prop. Now I have done a stainless prop torture test video and I absolutely did everything I could to try to destroy one. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link up wherever in one of these places up here and you can go check out the stainless steel prop torture test video. A send it video would not be complete without some time in the haters corner. Got some haterade in my cup. Here we go. If you're not familiar with a haters corner, what we'd like to do at the end of every video is stand in a corner and see who was the most butt hurt in the comments section over the last couple of weeks. And because we know that people on the interwebs are extremely sensitive, we don't use their real names. We just call them Scooter. Our first Scooter left a comment and said, what's the best razor for a grown man to shave his arms with? Well, Scooter, I prefer the Harry's razors because they're cheap and they work quite well, especially on other parts of the body. And if you're jealous of my arms, you'd be super jealous of some other parts of me because I got some parts that are as slick as a newborn baby seal covered in Vaseline. But I looked at your profile picture, Scooter. Don't worry about shaving your arms or anything else on your body because you look like something I drew with my left hand. Our next Scooter left a comment on another video and wrote, Scooter's right. Amazon sucks. Go run your boat in China. Now, I checked every single one of my Amazon receipts after I read this comment and mm -mm, I didn't buy any of your bull Scooter. But hey, just think of the fact that they now found out that jellyfish have survived over 650 million years without a brain. That should give you a lot of hope, Scooter. You'll be all right. 
Why does everybody got to hate on Amazon anyways? Amazon's awesome. I find cheap stuff on there. I put it on my boat. If I like it, I'll share a link with you guys and you can buy it. Our next scooter left a comment and YouTube actually flagged this one and said it was potentially inappropriate. Scooter writes, your personality and stupid jokes make this video unwatchable. Well, of course I have to talk stupid, Scooter. How else would I expect for you to understand me? And my personality is an acquired taste. If you don't like it, go acquire some taste. YouTube also flagged this next Scooter as potentially inappropriate. And the Scooter writes, You're corny. Grow up. This scooter is apparently the human equivalent of a participation award. But speaking of corn, I had this tragic, crazy incident that happened a while back. It involved a corn tortilla and some shredded beef. And, I mean, to this day, I still can't even talk about it. Our next scooter left a very nice comment that YouTube also flagged as potentially inappropriate. Of course, I had to read it because I like potentially inappropriate stuff. And Scooter wrote this on my video that I titled Lies and Myth About Float Pods, where I went through a lot of different things that people you know, kind of get wrong about float pods. Scooter writes, nobody's hating, just pointing out the fact that you're as misled and ignorant as the people you made this video about. Cheers to you, dick beers. <laughs> wow. I have met a lot of pricks in my life, but this scooter is a cactus. And I have never in my life heard the term dick beers before, so I had to Google it. And oh my word, I had no clue there was so many alcoholic beverages that were named after male genitalia. So that gives you a kind of an idea of what Scooter spends his time on the internet looking at. I bet if you got a hold of Scooter's computer and looked up his Google search history, it probably has a lot of words including sword fighting and space docking. And our honorable mention for this video, Scooter wrote on my How Fast Does John Boat Go? We're talking about 1648 John Boats. Scooter writes, YouTube was trying to make me dislike this video. Every time I tapped the thumbs up button, the dislike button would get selected. Must have been what happened to 2022 as well. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. 